thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all have gone before us, and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and possessions, your name stands above them all. And the angels cry. Creation and cry. 
Good morning, everyone. Let's unite our heart. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we are so thankful for today. Today is the day that you have made for us, and we will glad in it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful blessing, for your wonderful grace for us. Have your way in our meeting today. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand together. Says the enemy, let praise be your weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise, let praise arise. We sing, we sing your name in the dark, and it changes everything. We sing with all we are, and we bring your victory. side of me This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. Yes. Sing again. This is what living.
light of the world you step down into darkness oh you did admit this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you here i am here i am to worship here i am to say
together worthy, all together wonderful to me. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together
I don't need anything else. You are. Come on, church, you sing it. I don't want. anything else you are my one thing you are my one thing I don't want anyone else oh I don't need anything else cause you are my one thing you are my one you are my one thing you the children to come forward. We will pray for them as they are proceeding to Sunday school. Let us bow our heads and we pray for them. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for this beautiful morning as we gather together in your name, Lord Jesus. We know that you are present with us. We continue asking you that you will bless our meeting today as we stand in your presence, Lord. We especially pray for these little ones. We pray that you will bless them, pray that you will give them the wisdom the understanding understand to understand more of you we pray for the sunday school teachers we pray that you will also anoint them with your spirit that they will be used by you lord that they will be used to direct these little ones to know you more and more we continue to pray for our service today from the beginning to the end as we are preparing our hearts to listen to your word, we pray that your Holy Spirit works in our lives. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for this opportunity. We commit our prayers into your hand. In the name of the Lord Jesus, everyone who believes, say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the house of the Lord. And this is the beginning of the, the first Sunday in the month, and we will have Holy Communion afterward. And for the Word of God, we like to invite Pastor Sarah to deliver the message. Without further ado, I like to invite her to speak. Good morning, everybody. How are you? I just finished a, sh a session with the Sunday school kids way back at my home church, and I asked them this, are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? So the same question I want to ask you today, can I, can I, is it okay to move there, to move down there? Is it okay? Okay. Okay, uh, I want to ask you the same question today. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Yeah, I can't hear you. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Yes. Are you blessed to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Um, I said to few of you, I'm telling you the truth that it's kind of like after the epic <laughs> preaching last week, kind of like, you know, it's kind of like filling in big shoes today. But you know what? God 
God is good. After quite some time, I come back here and I see you guys. I've always been part of you guys, and it's an honor to be here. Thank you, Pastor Daniel. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, anyways, um, today I asked God, God, what am I supposed to share after that epic sermon Pastor Heath left us with? You know, kind of like nothing to compete that, kind of like. But God said, you're not here to compete. Come on. So, and he put this verse in my heart, you know, about a new season, a new season and a new chapter of life, of the journey of this church. There's going to be a new season. There's going to be a new chapter that God is going to bring this church through. There's a journey that God is going to bring you through. Church, can somebody say amen? When you say a new thing, when you say a new thing, it's always kind of like scary. Because it's kind of like you're stepping to the unknown. Right? What is this season going to be like? What is it going to be like? So, the story of today is about the 12 stones. The 12 memorial stones. What is it about? Now, the background story of this is Moses have just died. Okay? The Israelites are already there and they're still there. They're just looking at, they can see the promised land, but they have not actually went into it. You know, God's promise is there just beyond that river. God's promise is what God intended for them. Their inheritance, everything they have that was told by Moses. 40 years they have been hearing about that. That God will lead them to the promised land. And it's there in front of their eyes. But you know what? They have not been doing anything. They're still waiting. And God said to Joshua, Joshua, I know Moses is done with his, what he has done. But now it's your time. Bring the people. Cross that Jordan River. Cross now. Bring now them to what I have intended them to have. Their inheritance. Bring them now, Joshua. But it's like, maybe Joshua said, but God, we don't have canoes. Must we bring, must we what, you know? Maybe he said that. It's not written in the Bible. But what we know is, there it is the Jordan River. Do you know what Jordan, uh, I mean, meaning of the Jordan River means? It's actually the river of death. It's actually the river. They have to cross that. They have to go through that so that they will inherit what God has for them. So what they did was, Okay, Joshua said, so how am I going to do it? Lord instructed him to ask the Ark of the Covenant to go forth first and ask the priest, the priest legs, I mean the foot hits the water, the water will depart. This is the second time the water departed after the Red Sea. So, at that time, it was the rainy season. Why I can say that? Because the river was so wide until God has to depart it. Because Jordan, if you have been there, 
if it's in the uh, dry season or when it's in summer, the water just goes very low. Like you can see, it's almost dry. But when it's in the rainy season, it overflows. Now, they are going to cross when the Jordan River is overflowing. Have you ever had this situation in your life when you know that is God, but the situation seems overwhelming? Have you ever been in that situation? Or is it only me? You know there's God there. But the situation is free. God, it's just too much. I don't think I can go through it. Have you ever, anybody, witnessed that kind of situation? One, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, sometimes when God asks you to do something, you know it's more than what you can handle. The river is too wide, it's too deep, it's too much. But God said, if you want your promise, cross it. Church, today, God is telling you, if you want it, cross it. Say to the left and to the right, if you want it, cross it. Come on. Bring the presence of the Lord because the moment in 2 Peter says this, right? We are the holy people, holy priesthood, kingly priesthood, right? So when we carry, we carry the presence of God. When we step into that overwhelming situation when we step into that the water departs what you're fire facing departs because why the presence of the lord is with you it is in you it is with you and it wants you wants to bring you to that promised land to what you're supposed to have to conquer what is yours that was taken away from you. What was taken away from you from the enemy, God is going to restore it in this season. Church, are you willing to cross? And not only that, Let's see. It's the sermon today is taken from Joshua 4. Go home and read it again and again, guys. I pray that you will find a deeper revelation from what I share to you today. Because if you know what I can see here that I'm trying to convey, you will be burned for this new season. You will be really sold out for this new season. Because why? There's such a promise. You will inherit what is intended for you in this new season if you're willing to cross. If you're willing to cross, if you're willing to face the giants of the land. It's not going to be easy, yes. But you know what? This is it. Let's see. In Joshua 4, verse 7. Joshua 4, verse 7. Is it up? Okay. Look. If you have your Bibles, open up with me. Joshua 4, verse 7. Okay, can we read it together? Can we stand up? And we read this together. Joshua 4, verse 7. 
We'll read it together. One, two, three. That all the people of the earth may know the hand of the Lord that is mighty. Can, can somebody read it again with a loud voice? Joshua 4, 1, 2, 3. Verse 7. Joshua 4. He open. Okay. Okay, let's read together. Uh, I am using the NLT version. Okay, let's read this. Then you can call, tell them. They remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the Ark of the Lord, Lord's Covenant crossed. These stones will stand as a memorial among the people forever. Amen. These stones, so Joshua, different version, I guess. Okay, so, okay. So, um, did you get that? Can we read together again? Verse 7, together. One, two, three. Then you can call them, you can tell them, they remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the Ark of the Lord's Covenant went across. These stones will what? Stand as a memorial amongst the people of the Lord, uh, amongst the people of Israel forever. And verse 8, it says this, they carried them to the place where they camped for the night and constructed the memorial tree. You know, please sit down. You know, when, when, when God asked them to do so, when they did that, you know, actually, Joshua did two stones, two different stones, I mean, two different set. One, he put it in the river. And one was brought, one, one, one set of 12 stone was in the camp. You know why? Whenever they go through drought, whenever the dry season hits, whenever your dry season hits, you can still remember that God that brought us through this Jordan River is the same God that is going to bring us through this season, whatever the season of life. God is there. Why do they need that memorial stone amongst them? It's so that, so that when the kids, the next generation, ask them, like, why do you put these stones here? What is this for? Parents, have you ever testified to your kids about your journey of life? Take time to tell that journey so that when they ask, when they are in problems, when they're, when they're facing things, you can say how the Lord has brought you through. That is the reason why God asked them 
As the kids, I mean, as the children of Israel, the 12 people from the tribes to just come and pile up those stones. One Joshua put in the middle of the river that is there till today. And the other 12 is by where the Israelites camp after they cross. To remind them, to remind them of how God has brought them through. And this is where God made himself known that he never left them alone. In verse 24, it says like this, He did this so all the nations of the earth might know that the Lord's hand is powerful and so mighty, and, and, so, and, and so you might fear the Lord your God forever, and nations will also fear the Lord. And also it says here, then Joshua said to the Israelites, verse 21, in the future, said, your children will ask. Guys, your children will ask. Church of God, your children and your children's children will ask about your faith, about your journey, about said, why are you so for Jesus? Why is Jesus so important? I am a teacher. And I face many, many, many children, youth of this generation. They don't experience God. They don't have that journey with God. They call themselves Christian, but they don't walk with God. My heart breaks for them. My heart breaks for the generation. But I am only one. I need parents to stand with me, to share the walk of faith to this generation, to remind them to remind them of who, of how they got where they are with Christ. To walk that journey together in this season. If you want your inheritance, your first inheritance is your children. Take them back. Take them back. Take them back for your kingdom, for the kingdom of God. So number one, number one, it is about remembering that crossing, that you make that choice to cross. You make that choice to take your inheritance. You make that choice to walk with God. Because why? He's there with you. He wants you. Don't forget what He has done. Don't forget that He has brought you and share that to the next generation. Tell that. Pile it up like stones of memorial stones in your life. Every time you have a breakthrough with God, piled it up and share it to the next generation. Hey, God has brought your mom and dad through this. And as he has been with us, 
so he shall be with you. And all the parents say, Amen. Remember this, Church of God. The first thing, why you need to pile those stones before, after you cross the Jordan. Because you know your inheritance. You know you will get what you are inten intended to get in God and what God has promised. But pile those victories. Pile those journeys. Make it a storybook for your children to see. An open storybook for your children to see and pray that they will experience God as real as you have experienced Him. Number two, again, it talks about legacy. Like in verse 20 in, uh, going down until 24, it says that God is there. When the next generation comes, I cannot emphasize even more. Speak it, share it to the next generation. We as teachers, we only meet your kids like 30 minutes or an hour a week. But it's your kids, share your faith, build it up there. Make it real to them. Make your journey with God real, your ups and downs. You, we don't have to be all super people. Even our failures, we need to tell them. Because why? Through our failures, we can share to them about the grace of God that brought us through. God did not throw us away, but He brought us through even when we make faults. Even when we make mistakes. He is still there with us. He is not a God that when you are only good, He will walk with you. No. He will be there whether you want it or not. The thing is, what we did wrong is keeping us from Him. But He is always there. Share that. Make it real to your kids. Number two, share it to the generations. The important legacy, that is your legacy. As you get your inheritance from God, share your faith inheritance to them. Because when your faith, your faith inheritance, your faith legacy can never rot. It will never rot because God is there to walk with you, to share with you. The first thing as you cross that Jordan you need to take is take back what belongs to you, your inheritance, your legacy, your children. Take them back. Take them back, guys. Take them back. Don't let the world take them. Take them back. They are your precious ones. Gems. Number three. Again. As you remember... You walk with him. You walk through the time of wonderfulness or in time of drought. When you walk with him, every single step, there is a history that is being made in your life. But again, you need to take that step. Die to self. Die to the past. 
the past is wonderful, the fire and the, 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 the pillar of fire and the pillar of clouds was wonderful. Everything there was wonderful, but now it's time. Do you know the phrase of saying, burn the bridge? Well, God is asking you to burn the bridge behind you because why? He has inheritance for you in this new season in the land that God has promised you with milk and honey. But you have to cross the Jordan. You have to die to that doubt, to that fear, to the unknown. You have to die to that. And just like God, okay, I'm trusting you. And I'm walking. Because why? The first one that went through is what? The Ark of the Covenant means the presence of God. When we in line with His presence. Again, Second Peter said what? That we are a holy nation. We are royal priesthood. We carry that Ark. We carry that presence of God. And as we step in, it may still look like a river, but it will make a way. It will open up ways for you to get to your inheritance, for you to get to what you have been intended to have, what God promised you to have. Today, church, Three things. First, remember. Remember how God make it, make it a journey's legacy. Make it a memorial thing. Remember all the goodness, all how God has brought you through, through your ups and downs. Two, make that choice to go. Make that choice to walk. Make that choice to face what is in front. Remember how he brought you through. Face what is in front. Share it to your kids. Number three, share it to your kids. Share it to the next generation. Be that testimony of life to them. An open book an open history book of how God has brought you through and what he has intended for us today. These three things I leave to you today. That whole world will know that God is with you. And his presence will be with you and with your children and your children's children from generation to generation. They will see and remember how God has brought you through. Hold your hand through that all and help you get, I mean, make you get your inheritance. Stay focused on what's ahead in this new season. Stay focused. Cross and share. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Father, I pray right now as your church step into the unknown, oh God, in this new season, as you have said, let us build on what you have built in us, everything that you have promised us, 
everything that you have done for us. Let it be a memorial stone in our life, oh God. A milestone. Every one of it. Let our journey be with real, with the real journey with you, O oh God. Be in our remembrance that every time we face the impossibilities, we face the giants, we face things in our lives, O oh God, that we can look back as those, at those memorial stones in our lives and say, God, you've been there. Your hand has been there for, with us this far. All throughout our lives, your hand has been there. You have never, ever left us alone. Even in our frailties, in our, in our, in our, in our misconducts, you're still there with us, oh God. Right now, Lord, we want to remember you again. Make you part of our lives again. Make you part of our journey again. And with that, with your presence with us, we want to cross. We want to cross over to what is intended for us to our inheritance, to what you want for us, to receive your promises for us in this new season. We want to cross over, God. We want to cross over, God. And as we cross, we know your presence will be there with us. And last but not least, as we do that, we want the next generation, our children and their children's children, generation to generation. We want to share that to them. We want to tell the journey of our faith with them. We will share our lives with them so that the way you are with us, O oh God, you will be with the generation to come. From generation to generation, we want them to experience you just like we have experienced you in our lives, oh God. May this, God, may this journey in the new season, as we cross over, be another milestone in our lives, but that God, you have first promised to be with us, never leave us, and to help us get to where we have to be. Thank you, God. And surely, God, surely, surely the nations, the nations <coughs> that all people of the earth may know the hand of the Lord, that mighty hand of the Lord is with us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. I invite Pastor Daniel. Before we take our Holy Communion, 
before we partake the Lord's Supper, let us sing a song, The Living Hope. Let us take some time before the presence of God and ask Him to examine ourselves. Yes, Holy Spirit, You come to our hearts. You fill us. Speak to us. Hallelujah. How great the cancer that lays between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven. And spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine? Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? Let us stand up together in the presence of God. Step down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has broken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Then came the morning, then came the morning, then still the promise, your very body began to breathe out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave as no
Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Oh, you're my living hope. Glory to your name, Lord Jesus. Let us lift up the bread that is the symbol of the body of Christ. We come to your presence, Father God. As a church, we know, Lord, we really need you. We pray that you will continue to uphold us, Lord. As we are walking in our faith, we know that we just need you more and more. We need your spirit to enlighten us, to fill us, to strengthen us. We pray, Father, as we taking the Lord's Supper today, we pray that you will work in our lives, that you will build us up, that we will do more glory to your kingdom, bringing more souls. Father God, we pray that you will continue to bless our fellowship, our friends, brothers, and sisters. As we are going to partake the Lord's Supper, we ask you to forgive us. Every individual in this room, we are sometimes went astray just like sheep gone to our own way, but we once again ask for your forgiveness. Forgive us if there are some of us who committed certain things, certain sins. We pray that you will forgive us. I like to read from the Bible. The Word of God says, The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? If you believe, you answer, Amen. Let us partake it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Let us lift up the cup that we receive. We remember the sacrifice that the Lord Jesus gave for us. He is God. He came to this world. He became human, just like you and me, for the purpose that He will take our sins that he will replace us in our punishment he was hanging on the cross the most cruel things that the people can do in those days the people hang the criminals together with him he was no sin he did not even know sin Yet, the people put him on the cross. They hang him, they kill him. That is the replacement on our behalf. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Father God, we ask for your forgiveness. If there are things in our lives that are not pleasing unto you, if there are things in our lives they are contrary to your word of the word of the Lord. Forgive us, Father. Let the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ purify us once again. Wash us once again from all our sins and trespasses. I like to read from the word of God. If you believe, you answer Amen and take it in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
isn't the cup of blessing which we bless? Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? Everybody say Amen. Amen. Let us take it, partake it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us sing the song once again. Let us surrender ourselves unto Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. That has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Sing hallelujah. 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 Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We exalt you high. Hallelujah. You are the only person has who can set us free from the curse of sin. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you the opportunity that we can partake the Lord's Supper once again. We know, Lord, that we are unworthy to receive all your grace, your goodness. But again, to, just like the Word of God says, that you are the one who invite us, that you are the one who take the initiative to come to this world and bring peace, reconciliation, that we can know the Father personally, that we can go back to the love of the Father. Yes, Father God, thank you so much for sending the only begotten Son, your only begotten Son, for us, Lord, for the redemption for our sins. We commit our lives unto you in this, especially this new week, Lord. We just, yes, we just trust you. We just want to obey you. Thank you for the word that we just listened this afternoon. We know, Lord, that sometimes there are things that we don't understand, but we want to keep trusting you. We want to keep having faith on you, that you are good God, that you will continue to lead us through every difficulties in life. Thank you, and bring victory. Thank you, Father. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everyone who believes, say, Amen.
happy birthday to Intan and Sindu and happy anniversary to Aji and Dale. May God bless you. And let's we pray. Dear God, thank you for today, for the opportunity that we can gather in your house to worship, to listen to your word, and to glorify your name. And thank you for every blessing and every faithfulness for us. At this time, as we are giving back some of the portion that you have blessed us with, may it become a pleasant offering and may it be used for the expansion of your kingdom. We pray for every hand who are giving. May you continue to bless all of us according to your will. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we all pray. Amen. I'd like to invite Pastor Daniel to close. Yes, we are coming to the end of the service and we like to pray for some of you, some of us who are traveling, especially Pastor Heath, who are traveling today to Jakarta and tomorrow I think the family and Pastor Heath will be traveling back to US. And we will continue to pray for some of us who are not feeling well and yes. Uh, I visited uh, Eric yesterday, was on the hospital, and Trifena's husband, and we'll continue to pray for him. He is, I think, suffering from dengue fever, but he's, he's recovering, praise the Lord. And let us stand up together once again. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this afternoon as we gather together in your name we continue to pray for pastor Heath who is and the family are traveling back to america tomorrow we pray that you will be with them that you will grant them a safe trip nice trip father we pray that you will prosper their stay in america that you will open a new, new doors lord greater plan ahead for him father thank you as we ending this service we like to pray for our brother and sister who are celebrating their birthday for the past few days we pray for sister intan that you will continue to prosper her bless her that you will grant her good health and give her the strength every day to be the to do all the responsibility that she has as a housewife and, and in whatever area that you put her Lord that you will bless her bless her family bless her kids thank you father and bless also brother Dean and we like to uphold Sindhu also who are celebrating his birthday that you will also bless him that you will give him the wisdom give him more faith to trust in you bless his family bless his ministry and we also like to pray for Aji and Kali who celebrated their wedding anniversary you are the one who put them together and we know Lord that you have a good plan for his marriage we pray for a stronger bond in that family for that couple we pray that you will make Aji and Kali being a example for many many young ones thank you for their faith thank you for their faithfulness thank you father and as we are going to depart for this place we ask for your blessing hands upon our heads that you will put your own hands lord upon our lives let the blessing from god the father and the love of jesus christ and the fellowship of the holy spirit be upon every one of us receive it in the name of the lord jesus everyone who believes say amen